Welcome to this Oracle ADF demo. Oracle ADF is a development framework that simplifies Java application development. It provides you an end-to-end -end MVC framework. It focuses on visual and declarative development. It creates rich web interfaces, and it simplifies the way that you access data from various sources. It does all of this while focusing on reusability and modularity when building an application. Let's see a demo of Oracle ADF. Let's build an Oracle ADF application. The first thing we'll do is create business components from tables. We'll connect to a database. This can be an Oracle database or any other database. And we're going to fetch the descriptions of tables from the data dictionary in order to create Java objects that will allow us to perform the CRUD operation for those tables. We simply query the data dictionary, pick up the tables that we're interested in working with, and shuttle them to the right in this wizard. After we finish this wizard, we're going to have a set of components that allow us to insert, update, delete, and select data from the tables. Oracle ADF correctly identifies the structure of the database, including relationship between tables and the definition of each table and the column in it. We can now go into each one of the objects that have been created and refine the definition. For example, here we're going to add a validation to a field. There's a range of uh, various declarative validations you can choose, and here we're using specifically the range validation, and we're even specifying an error message that will show up in case the validation is violated and someone inserts an invalid value into the system. Another thing that you can centrally define for your business object is default behavior in the UI layer. For example, here for the higher date, we're defining a default label and we're also going to define a default format mask for this date field. By having it centrally located, this is going to be reflected in all the pages by default. To support internationalization of your application, those strings are extracted into a separate file that is ready to be translated into other languages, giving you support for multiple languages in a single application. Let's see another thing that Oracle ADF does very nicely. Here, for example, we find a regular scenario in relational databases where a table contains a code which is translated in another table. We're going to define a list of value that fetches this translation from another table. As you can see, it's done declaratively. We connect to the other table, pick up the field we want to show, pick up how we want to show it by default, and even control the query parameters for this field. These are just some of the features of Oracle ADF that make interaction with databases very easy to develop. Now that our data model is done, let's go and design our user interface. We're going to create a facelets page using JSF standards and picking up one of the templates provided by Oracle ADF. Into this template, we can drag and drop one of the 150 UI components that the ADF faces set of components provide. For example, here we're using a dashboard component and into the dashboard component, we are going to put a couple, or four actually, panel boxes. All of those are coming from the set of the layout components provided by Oracle ADF, allowing you to create very rich and complex user interface layouts in your web application. The dashboard can control the components inside it. For example, we can define how many components per row, and we can define the size of each one of the boxes. This allows you to do it through properties instead of having to go and manipulate HTML directly. Now that our layout is ready, let's connect some data into the layout. Here we have access to the Oracle ADF binding layer, which allows us to drag and drop data controls. In this case, the business objects we created before are available here, and we're creating a list of departments showing the department name that is going to be displayed on the left side of the screen. For the list, we can turn on all sorts of behaviors. For example, we're going to allow the list to uh, enable us to select a specific record. And then we can either code what's going to happen when such a record is selected, or we can use one of the built-in methods provided by Oracle ADF. For example, in this case, we're going to use the make current method that will be invoked when we select a department. Here we can see the master detail relationship between department and employees and we're taking the employees for a specific department and dropping them on the page to create a table. For the table, we can turn on various behaviors again, for example, selecting a record, 
as well as the ability to sort the table and make the table read only. We're going to remove some of the columns that are not interesting to us in the view and create our table in the page. Again, the table also has a set of properties that we can set. You can easily navigate the set of properties using the search field at the top. For example, if we want to stretch the table, we can choose to stretch the last column of the table to fill out the space. We can now use the same employee object and drop it on the second box to create a form. This will be an update form that will allow us to update data about the employee. We can again remove some of the columns that we are not interested in showing on this page and click OK to create the various UI components that will bind to the business object. This includes text fields, date fields, and other types of fields. In the third box, we are going to again drag and drop the employee to create one of our charts. Oracle ADF offers a variety of charts that you can use, and it's very easy to take and bind data to those charts, again, in a visual way. So here we're going to show salary for each one of the employees in a specific department. So far, we've seen how easy it is to work with a data that is coming from a database, but we can also work with data that is coming from other sources. Let's go back into the model project, and here we're going to see one Java class that is called Map Services. Here we have a method that returns a specific coordinates for a specific location based on a parameter. If we want to expose this Java class and use it in Oracle ADF, we simply create a data control. By the way, Oracle ADF allows you to create data controls on top of Java classes, SOAP and REST services, EJBs, and other components. Once you create the data control, Oracle ADF understands the structure of the Java class and without changing the actual code of the class, creates a data control that you can now drag and drop into other pages. So now, here is our data control, and let's create a new task flow. Task flow is a way to define modular components in our application. A flow can consist of multiple pages, as well as calls to decision points, method, and basically describe a complete process flow. So here we are defining a very simple flow between two pages. One page will show us a list of jobs, and the other one would show us the location of a specific job. We can then define the navigation between those places using a very simple diagram. Once we have our flow defined, let's go and define each one of the pages in this flow. So double clicking on the page, we're going to create a blank page now. And we're going to pick from the set of data that we're bringing from the database, the list of jobs. So just drag and drop it onto the page. And again, we're going to create a table component. We're going to turn on various behaviors of the tables and allow you to select a specific record. Now we can take one of the fields that was created for us and modify it. For example, here's the job ID. We're going to copy the value of this field, so copy the value of this property, and then we're going to convert this field from being a simple output text to being a link. A link can actually allow us to do operation on the page, for example, link to another page. We're going to still display as the text the value, the job ID, and we're going to map the link to do a specific action, which is the navigation we defined in the page flow. So clicking on the link would take us through the navigation to the second page. Let's create the second page. And here we are going to use the Java class that we created the data control for, and simply drag the results of this Java class and the method in it onto the page. And this time we're going to choose to drop it as a geographical map. We're going to provide a parameter. Here we're just going to hard code the value for now, but this can of course be based on expression language. We connect to a map server returning us images of maps. And on this map we're going to use exact coordinates to define the location. With Oracle ADF, it's as easy to bind any Java class into your ADFaces components in a declarative way. Our two-page jobs flow is now complete. 
the nice thing about this flow is that it's reusable across multiple applications and even inside our own application. This complete application back to the first ADF and we're going to drag over the flow coding, that we just defined, creating it to the fourth box on the application. This allows us to drop this as either a region or a dynamic region. Get dynamic regions will allow us to switch the content of this area on the page at runtime based on parameters, creating highly reusable single page type of application using Oracle ADF. Let's run the application. The running page appears in our browser and we can choose between various departments. Notice how we don't do full page refresh, only transmitting the data into areas of the page. We have validation at the field level done on the client and we have a rich component to choose a date. We have a list of value that also allows us to pick value as well as do searches. The charts uses HTML5 to render on the client allowing us to zoom in, zoom out and dynamically modify the access based on the data displayed. The table allows us to filter the data based on the values inside it, for example let's look for jobs starting with A, and also to reposition columns in the table. We can then choose a specific job and navigate to the second page in our flow that displays a map with the location of where the job is. So in about 10 minutes we showed you how to build a complete application from scratch. Now that we didn't code much manually, we use declarative approach to development. However, what you have created is a complete Java-based application and the code is accessible to you. To learn more about Oracle ADF and the benefit it provides, visit oracle.com/adf for tutorials, training and many other resources.